Hey, and welcome to Trail Trials, a video review section of irunfar.com. My name is Travis Lyles, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the 13th iteration of the Saucony Peregrine. Let's check it out. Let's start off by talking about the specs. This shoe comes in at about nine and a half ounces. It is a four millimeter drop from heel to toe. It has a luggy outsole. It's kind of meant to be low and athletic and good kind of tight fitting type of, of shoe. It's a 13th iteration of, of the Peregrine. And so it's been around a while. It's gone through some very interesting changes over the years. I think from where it started from, which was something I've always had a soft spot for. It's one of these early road running brands that introduced a trail shoe that was trail specific. It wasn't just this existing road shoe model that they slapped a, a gray upper on or, or maybe a dark blue and added some like kind of lugginess to the bottom. They really made a specific shoe at the time and I was always a fan of it. I liked the lower stack height. I liked the fact that it was grippy and kind of had some aggressive tread and those types of things on it. But the shoe has sort of vacillated over the years it's just kind of gone all over the place. It started off in the first several iterations were like very much like to what the shoe started as. And then it hit some stuff in the middle. They got rid of rock plates. The shoe got really heavy. Just a lot of stuff sort of changed. I'm happy to say that in this latest version, it's very much closer to what I think the initial intent and what most people probably had in their minds if they've been in trail running for a while of what the Peregrine initially was. And they do that with some updates, updated foam, updated sock liner, updated materials. So that's what we're gonna talk about here today. All the changes, what's new, what's different, what's good, what's not. Let's get up close and personal. Let's see what this thing is all about. All right, let's jump in and start at the outsole. I'd say one of the defining characteristics of the Peregrine line, really from its inception, has been a luggy, aggressive outsole. And that continues on here with the 13, albeit a little bit updated. Um, so if you've worn them in the past, they tended to be a little more sort of very much like long blades. These are more chevron looking uh, and larger lugs with more space in between them. And in fact, for just a quick comparison, this is the Peregrine 12 on the right hand side with the sort of bubblegum purpley blue cosmic outsole and you can just see there's a lot more lugs that are smaller uh, and over here on the 13 we have fewer lugs that are, are farther spaced out and I think the advantage here in my testing is that this allows the mud to sort of clear out a little bit better while still providing grip so you can see you've got these uphill facing lugs so they face backwards so that your traction is kind of behind you the blades dig in and, and allow for traction up and then there's kind of some varying lug patterning here on the back mainly on the outside though is the braking types of lugs and then the middle part of the back overall i think it works really good clears out mud a little bit better uh, and really i think provides what the peregrine has normally been about which is good traction in, in a trail shoe. This uses power track outsole. Uh, you can kind of see that called out here. And that is their rubber compound. And I think compared to say the 12 over here, this one feels a little stickier. I think there's a little more traction when I wear the 13 compared to the 12, especially on like wet things. But some of that could be because of this lug spacing. So in like things can sort of get in between the tread on this. Whereas on the previous version, they were tighter, so it made it harder for that to happen. So I don't know if it's necessarily the rubber compound or the lug, but I, I think overall, this has got a little more traction than the previous versions and maybe over any of the Peregrine tractions before, or maybe most confident feeling outsole I think I've dealt with on a Peregrine. So as we look at kind of the underfoot protection, you can note here, same color as the midsole. So this is the midsole here that's exposed. Um, so there's no rock plate or anything like that in here. When you move up to the front of the shoe, you're gonna see this green color inside and that actually is the, the rock plate uh, that's in the shoe. So very much a, when you're running downhill, when you're doing things like not heel striking or, or on your heels really hard, the shoe excels. If you are someone that's kind of on your heels and that type of stuff more often, you can sort of feel a little bit of that pressure and pointiness coming through on the back of the shoe because there just isn't as much to deflect it. And because it's a shorter midsole stack, you don't have as much protection up like 
for cushion for things to absorb into. And with that, let's move up here to the, to the midsole. And this uses Power Run. And Power Run is, in this example, a, I'd say a medium type of, of cushion. And what I mean by that is it's not overly cushy and it's not overly firm. It's very much a, a middle ground type of midsole. And I think it's good. And, and probably if I was to describe where this fits, I think it fits a little bit more towards the active side of cushioning meaning that you get a little more rebound out of this. And that's really what the focus is, is it's kind of running fast and propulsion forward versus I want a bunch of cushion and, and, and comfort. It's comfortable. I think it it's, walks a nice line there. Uh, but overall, this is definitely what I would say is a, a quicker midsole. And when you look at it, it's just single foam all the way across. And again, this is a four millimeter drop, which is classic in the Peregrine line. Um, so you don't have a ton of stack underneath here but you very much have, I'd say, again, enough, just like the protection, it's doing enough to sort of be a really well-rounded, I think, midsole that's gonna serve well in a lot, of different, uh, a lot of different environments. The one thing, though, that I think adds to this shoe that I generally don't call out very often is the sock liner. And this sock liner is pretty interesting in that if you look close here, you can see this sort of, I can't find this in literature anywhere, but I believe this is the Power Run Plus. So I've got some other Saucony road running shoes that have this type of foam in the midsole. And this is a really excellent sock liner. It holds up really well. It has a lot of life to it. Like I've got miles on this and it's not pitted out. And a lot of sock liners get pitted out in the heel and in the toe where all your pressure is. This is very nice and cushiony and reboundy. So what this shoe lacks, I'd say in cushion in the midsole, and some protection in the midsole, you get a little bit extra here in the sock liner, just a nice little touch that you generally don't see in shoes in general. So let's move up to the, the upper here. And the upper is fairly basic uh, in that it is just mesh for the most part all the way around. There's not a bunch of overlays sort of creating stuff on the shoe necessarily in, in relation to anchor points down. So from a comfort standpoint, you don't have to worry about you know things poking against your foot or hurting or doing anything like that. As long as your foot fits in here, the mesh grips really well. There's some of these uh, laces that add a nice wrap on top of the foot. Uh, and I think overall does a fairly good job of locking your foot down and, and really creating sort of a, an athletic fit. And I say it all the time, I have a little bit of a wide foot it is mostly uh, gusseted all the way down, which is nice to see. So basically going from top eyelet all the way down creates a nice little sock-like feel. I'd like a little bit thicker tongue, but you know I've made the comment before that that tends to be the way that things are going. And this seems to be sort of built in a way that I don't feel a ton of pressure, even if I have to crank the laces down. Again, your, your mileage may vary. And the last thing I'll call out is all this overlay material that's on, on the upper here. So it's pretty minimal for the most part, uh, but there is no stitching. There's a little bit under these eyelets here, these loop eyelets that, that kind of help wrap the shoe on your foot. You don't notice those because of the booty and sock liner, gusseted tongue situation here. But what you can see is some of these black, darker spots, and that's actually where this overlay is kind of split. So this is two pieces coming together. There's a bottom one and a top one and there's a split there. If we look at that, it's even more prevalent on this side where you can see that line that separates these two pieces here and splitting more. And I think to really illustrate this, uh, I need to pull my, my right shoe up here. And you can see on this shoe, it, it's happening even more so. So on the interior side of the shoe, this is almost coming all the way off. I'd say as a positive, what I'm not seeing is any of this mesh really being chewed up or sort of a problem as an outcome of this really on either side so you can see these kind of high pressure areas the mesh is holding up well but this stuff is definitely coming off it's unglued it's unstuck whatever and debris has a potential to get down inside here so what this was doing for abrasion on the outside we're sort of trading that for the fact that it's not staying stuck that I could potentially get debris down inside of here and could cause some longevity of the shoe. But as it stands currently, all this aside, the mesh is holding up well. 
uh, across the shoe, and I don't see really any mesh breakdown uh, that I've seen probably in some other versions of this shoe in the past. In closing, there's a lot to like about this shoe. If you watch my reviews, you know I have a category. I like a shoe that I can do a lot of different things in that doesn't sort of narrow me into just groom trail or just rugged trail or doesn't perform well on a road because the reality is most races, most courses that I run, there's a little bit of all of that stuff anyway. So it's nice to have a shoe that sort of works across all of them that I'm not thinking about. I got to lock this shoe down because it's really floppy and I'm going to do a long downhill or it's sloppy and slaps when I'm on road and hard packed. This shoe fits well. It, for my foot, it rides nice. It does great on road. It does great on groom trail. It does good on, on messy stuff because of the lugs that are nice and deep. Um, so I think over it's protective with a rock plate. It's low to the ground, so I, I, my wonky ankles are less likely to turn over uh, versus something maybe higher stack and a little less stable as it relates to like that ride. So I think there's a lot to like here, and, and I do like this shoe a lot. Um, I think the biggest downside here is this overlay stuff. And if you watch my Torrent 3 review, I had the exact same problem with it. It's a shoe that is under $150 and it's falling apart at about 150 miles. Um, so I think on that front, this sort of setting here of these plastic overlays right now seems to be a big deal. That's what's being put on shoes to sort of add structure. Uh, maybe some of it's just visuals just to add something to it in a lightweight manner, but they're not staying on here. So if abrasion resistance is the goal of having this here as I'm, you know, running and maybe catching my foot on stuff, it's fine for this part, but then I'm running in places that has grit and sand and dirt and wood and all kinds of stuff that's sort of flying up and it's going to get stuck in here and over time probably rub holes from the inside versus from the outside. So this has got to get better. Um, maybe that's a larger commentary over just the Peregrine because I, I don't want to be in a spot where a $200 shoe, a $250 shoe, a $300 shoe is what I have to do to get a shoe that's going to last a longer amount of time. So hopefully this is just a little bit of a bump in the road as technologies update and change and, and we're seeing more of this that this becomes a little bit better. I think the positive side of it though is that none of this mesh, despite what I'm seeing here falling off, none of the mesh underneath is, is beat up. None of the mesh on this side that's not covered in some of this rubbery stuff, it's holding up just fine. So I think from that standpoint, aesthetically, I could probably cut this off or I could glue it back down. But you just have to know that going in. Like this shoe was white and now it's not, which may be a bad color for a trail shoe in, in the first place this color and you know you, you've got some of this stuff kind of splitting on the side the performance of the shoe overall though seems to be fine and i don't have any problems with what it's doing i guess in terms of the mesh holding up i still sort of look at it though and i'm like that's kind of lame so questions comments are there shoes that you're running into that are doing this same thing uh is it just me do i have bad luck I don't know. Uh, leave those in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.